Cloud Viewfinder, Art and Science Lesson. This is part one of two videos. So what are we actually going to be making? We're going to make a cloud viewfinder. Here's what that looks like. So we have a, a multiple different representations of different types of clouds with a cardboard cutout that we can then use to identify actual clouds in the sky. Why are we doing this? Well, we're trying to continue on with our experimentation with a variety of materials. So I'm using watercolor, I'm using pastels, and you can use the, the materials that you have at home. So if you have crayons, pencil crayons, markers, work with what you have. We're also practicing making art using a reference photo. So I have provided you with uh, multiple different pictures, photographs of uh, all the different types of clouds that we are learning about in science. We're also trying to be able to identify and represent the characteristics of the different types of clouds. All right. So what are we going to need? So as I mentioned, you're going to use what you have available at home. Um, it's nice to have some blue paper. If you have some blue construction paper, you can experiment with using white pastel or pencil crayon or crayon on top of it to see how that looks. Um, I'm also using watercolor paints. Um, and in order to use watercolor paints, I need to have a brush and paper towel and water to be able to wash my brushes off. Um, as I said, work with what you have at home. It's also nice to use, we had learned about shading with pencil, so some of the clouds have a bit of gray in them and it is nice to kind of practice that shading as well. So you're welcome to use pencil with a Q-tip, um, anything that you think would be appropriate for painting or drawing clouds. You'll also need the types of clouds reference pictures that I've provided. You can just look at them on your computer screen or you can print them out. All right, let's get started. So I would like to remind you of some of the techniques that we've learned so far this year. So when we were doing watercolor painting, we learned about the wet on wet technique where we paint wet watercolor on top of more wet watercolor. Um, the wax resist technique would work really well for clouds because we can use a white pastel or wax crayon to um, draw in those clouds before we paint on the blue sky afterwards. And the lifting technique with paper towels. When we take a paper towel and we smush it down on top of our paint, it works really well for making clouds. Um, we've also learned about scumbling or scribble texture where you kind of make circular shapes with your pencil or your brush, your tool that you're using, which is really great for creating that puffy texture that we see in the clouds. And blending with a Q-tip. So this would work with um, pencil. And if you're using pastels, you can blend those with your finger. Um, blending is great for creating that soft look that we sometimes see with certain types of clouds. All right, here we go into my process of painting my clouds. So I'm gonna start out with the cirrus clouds. So I'm kind of doing the ones that are high in elevation first. So I felt like a wax resist technique would be perfect for what they look like. So I'm just kind of drawing some sort of scratchy looking clouds with my white pastel. And I'm gonna go over it with my blue watercolor wash. You don't need to do the same techniques that I do. Um, I just want you to look at the cloud reference images and think about what techniques would be most effective at creating that type of cloud. So I'm also adding some black to my blue sky, make it a bit more gray. I'm going to label them as I go so that I can keep track of which one is which. So I'm going to try the cirrocumulus now and what I'm doing is I'm making a blue wash. I'm going to use my paper towel 
and try the lifting technique to try to recreate those small little clouds. And so I'll, I'll, I'll not let my wash dry. I'll quickly grab my paper towel. I'm gonna squish it up so it's kind of small and I'm just gonna dab at my paper to lift up some of the watercolor. All right, so now I'm gonna do the cirrostratus. And to me, the difference between these ones and the cirrus are that they're more horizontal and they're longer. Um, so I'm gonna kind of try to recreate doing the same technique with the wax resist and the pastel. But I'm just gonna make my lines uh, more horizontal and more, uh, more longer. And I'm gonna paint over it with my blue wash. And I also decided to do some more black to make the blue a bit darker and do a tiny bit of lifting in there as well. And I'm gonna label it once I'm happy with it. Okay, so you can continue doing your whole um, cloud visuals using watercolor, but I had some blue paper and I thought, you know, it would be really great to try using the white crayon pencil crayon or pastel on top of my blue paper. So right now what I'm working on is the Alto Cumulus. So I'm kind of doing, uh, you know, I'm using my pastel in a, a round and round kind of scribble texture type motion. Um, and I'm kind of blending it in with the background of the blue paper just a little bit. I don't want to blend it too much. I want them to I want those puffy kind of clouds to stick out against the blue background. I'm gonna label it. Now I'm gonna work on the Alto Stratus. So to me, this was kind of similar to Alto Cumulus, but it was closer together, kind of, um, and kind of longer and skinnier. So really what I'm trying to do is look at the reference image and take what I, what I understand about the description and represent it visually in the best way that I can. If you're working with watercolor on white paper, you'll have to either use wax resist or lifting wet methods because watercolor doesn't have any white paints. So what I'm doing here is I'm using white acrylic paint that I've added some water to. So I'm encouraging you to use any materials you have at home and I'm trying to make the cumulus cloud. So cumulus clouds are those puffy clouds and they're not blending in too much with the backgrounds. Um, they're standing out quite vividly against the blue sky. Um, so I was just using my brush in sort of a, a round and round motion and then doing a bit of lifting wet. Now I'm getting into the low altitude clouds and I'm going back to my watercolor. So for the stratus cloud, I'm just going to do lifting wet and I'm going to try to shape my paper towel into kind of a longer skinnier shape to match with what the stratus cloud or what I think the stratus cloud looks like. So there's my wash, my blue wash. I'm going to take my paper towel and kind of make a longer skinnier shape. And I'm pressing quite hard to be able to lift it so white, to be able to get the, the paint to lift up so much. So if you dab with your paper towel and nothing happens, just try pressing a little harder. Right. And then I felt like after doing the lifting, I thought in some of the reference pictures, it looked like there was a bit of gray. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of gray. I thought it was like at the bottom of the cloud a little bit. So I'm just gonna put that in and see what it looks like. Watercolor is the best because you can always change. You can always just add water on top of something and it will 
it will go back to how it was before. So you can't really make mistakes with watercolor. So now I'm going to label that as stratus. Okay, moving on to the stratocumulus. So I thought that those ones from my reference images, I, I just want to reiterate that I do have these in front of me the whole time. I have them on my laptop as I'm painting. And I'm kind of looking and every, every new uh, cloud that I'm painting, I'm thinking, okay, how is this different from the others? How is this similar to the others? Okay. And then I'm thinking, what techniques can I use to represent these? So I'm, I'm relying heavily on lifting wet. So I'm going to try lifting wet again. Um, and I'm going to do kind of more the similar to the stratus, but just a bit more puffier. And I did notice that there was some gray in like a little bit of the bottom of those ones. So I'm going to try some wet on wet technique and I'm going to go back into the stratus, just make some improvements and changes to that one as well. All right. So for Nimbo stratus, I actually did two different, I tried out two different techniques. So the first one, I, instead of doing a blue wash, I'm doing a gray, a dark gray wash. And I'm gonna do some lifting wet, or sorry, some lifting with paper towel. Um, just looking at some of the reference images, it looked like there was a lot of ones that had gray. And um, so I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try that type of background. And I'm gonna add some more uh, black paint on top and do some wet on wet techniques and I can also lift some of that if I'm not happy with how it looks to reiterate you don't need to copy exactly what I'm doing in this video you can come up with your own way of representing these clouds if you don't have watercolors you can draw them with pencil crayons um, it makes sense. I'm going to do the Nimbo Stratus. I'm going to try out with pencil and shade using a Q-tip and see how that works. I'm going to just um, use my finger to smudge this a bit and then I'm going to use an eraser to add in the white cloud. So I really want to see some experimentation and just um, some thought behind how can I represent what these clouds look like. After we see how this pencil shading version of the Nimbo Stratus cloud goes, I'd like to know which one you prefer. Did the watercolor one turn out better or did the, the pencil shading one turn out better? What do you think? All right, now we're doing the cumulonimbus. So I wanted to make this really big and puffy and have a little bit of gray included. And so I'm using my acrylic paint watered down on my blue paper. I'm also using my brush and moving it in a circular motion. And I'm putting more pressure in the areas that I want to be darker. I'm pressing down on my brush harder and I'm lifting it up a little bit from my paper when I want it to be lighter. And I'm also adding a little bit of water where I want it to be lighter as well. So you can, again, as I've said, experiment, 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 see which ones work best. Do it a couple of different tries for each cloud type and see which one you like better, just like I did with the Nimbo Stratus cloud. We've done all 10 types of clouds. And next video, we will look at how we're going to take all these cloud images and put them together to make our viewfinder. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out part two.